Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Haley and I do reviews of all the books that I read from a Christian perspective. I mostly read Christian fiction, classics, some nonfiction, Christian nonfiction, really a lot of different genres and um, hopefully you guys can get some good recommendations and learn whether books are clean or not. I apologize for my voice today. I have a little bit of a cold and my throat has been really scratchy. So if I cough or clear my throat, that's what's happening. So today I want to do a recap of all the books that I read in the month of May. And I actually ended up reading 13 books and I think it totaled up to be like 3,500 pages. So May was a really good month. Now some of them were um, books that I was finishing or shorter books, but there are a lot of books to talk about. So let's jump right in and talk about the 13 books that I read. Okay, so the first book on the list that I want to talk about is Words of Counsel by Charles Spurgeon. Um, this is really embarrassing. I started this book back in November, I believe, and it has taken me this long to finish it. Um, and it wasn't even that long of a book. It's actually only 170 pages, but I was just super inconsistent with reading it and got distracted by the other books that I was reading. <clears throat> But overall, I ended up giving it four stars. Personally, I think one of the reasons that took me longer for to read it was because it's not necessarily my type of book. Um, it's more of a devotional type book. Like we take a verse and then kind of talk about implications of that verse, but the verse is usually taken out of context. There's a lot of solid theology in there. And it was a very encouraging book on why you should evangelize and how to do it, but it just didn't captivate my interest as much and it took me longer to read. So yeah, there was a lot of things that I learned, a lot of encouragement and conviction in here. So if you need encouragement to be faithful in sharing the gospel, there's some great chapters on children's ministry and why it's very important to evangelize in the children's ministry and Spurgeon did a great job of encouraging us to be faithful in that. Then I read a little ebook called Hike the Hill Country. This book was by a friend who recently moved here in the last few years and has done a great job at exploring the different parks and fun places to go around this area. So this was really fun to read. It was only like a 30 page book and honestly I was a little mad that it was so short because I think there could have been a lot more details in there and it gave me a lot of ideas on things that I need to go do even though I've lived here almost my whole life there's a lot of places that I haven't been around here so I will for sure be referring back to this book and visiting some of the places in here so if you live in the Texas south central Texas area I would definitely recommend reading that book and finding some new places to go visit then I listened to Embers in the London Sky by Sarah Sundin I ended up giving this one four stars this is historical fiction about the bombings of London and the children who were sent to go live in the countryside think like uh Narnia and how the four children are sent to the countryside to live in this manner, right? Um, that was happening a lot, obviously, with the bombings in London. And so the opening to this book is definitely a lot. Um, I did not expect the opening. If you are sensitive to abuse and death, maybe skip this book because it starts out pretty heated. After that, there's nothing I think that needs a warning, really. Um, but just that part was was quite emotional um and by the end of the story justice is served so that there's hope to that but there are still consequences to what happened and all that um so the main story it revolves around this woman who's searching for her son who is staying with this unknown couple in the english countryside he gets sent away and she doesn't know where he went so she's looking for him and she joins the group of people who was organizing uh, sending those children out to the country and she actually added a lot of organization to the program. It was really interesting. I don't know like historically how that lines up, but I'm assuming that it was factual that there actually wasn't a lot of organization that went into sending these children to the countryside. Um, they were kind of just sent to people who wanted them, but there weren't a lot of records kept. So it was interesting to see that. Um, and then along the way, she falls in love with the infamous reporter for the BBC. Everyone recognizes his voice. Um, that was cool also to see like how the BBC radio worked and how the live reports were done during the war. That was really neat. So throughout the story also was a murder mystery, um, which I found that intriguing. Sarah, sometimes books don't normally have that aspect to it. So that was kind of neat. 
And I did enjoy one thing, you know that I talk a lot about biblical counseling and reading books from that perspective and whether they're giving good counsel. And this book actually I think did a great job. Hugh um, gives her some really great advice as she's being anxious and um, struggling with like OCD. And he tells her that, you know, anxiety solves nothing and that she might as well just pray and surrender it to God because she's doing all she can in working to find her son. Being anxious isn't going to help that. And then also like she has OCD habits like tapping her fingers and he's constantly just like stopping her from doing that and trying to break that habit. So I thought that was really cool to see um, that good advice that I would agree with in this Christian fiction book. So as far as content, it did have a bit of romance, few kisses in there, death, shooting, bombings, um, like I said, abuse, but nothing too graphic in there. Then I listened to this short little compilation, uh, The Reading Life by C.S. Lewis. It's a compilation of quotes from the, uh, what was it called? Experiment and Criticism, the essays that he wrote. And I think there's some stuff from a few other things like letters he wrote, but um, the subtitle is The Joy of Seeing New Worlds Through Others' Eyes. So basically it's just little quotes that he said about reading. This was really fun to read. It was definitely hard to listen to because it was just short little paragraphs, but I was also able to get the Kindle book to go with it so then I could screenshot the parts that I really liked. So that was fun. I did disagree with some of his things like he, adamantly as opposed to Alexander Dumas um, and he believes that you should read a book every 10 years if you truly love it and if you don't like a couple chapters just skip them and finish the book which I would never do that that would hurt me but there was a lot of good quotes in here a couple of ones I really liked he said when one has read a book I think there's nothing so nice as discussing it with someone even though it sometimes produces rather fierce arguments and I feel like that is like the poster quote for booktube and why we have these accounts because we want to learn or we want to talk about the books that we read but sometimes there's a lot of argument that comes with it so it's fun I definitely agree with this as I read a lot of modern books he says what is the point of keeping in touch with the contemporary scene why should one read authors one doesn't like because they happen to be alive at the same time as oneself. One might as well read everyone who had the same job or the same colored hair or the same income or the same chest measurements as far as I can see. There's definitely a lot of authors that I wouldn't try but a lot of them in like the Christian world I'll try them because they're you know contemporary to me and then I always end up going back to the classic author so I agree with them on that. So if you're looking for some good quotes from C.S. Lewis you can pick up that book. Then I read Bless Your Heart, Ray Sutton by Susanna B. Lewis. This one has been on my list for a long time because I heard it was a very uh, like funny book, Southern book. I ended up giving it three stars. I did actually enjoy it a lot and thought it was a really fun book and I would read more by this author. At first when I started it, I wasn't so sure about it. It's just some of the things that were happening, happening in it, but I genuinely enjoyed it. The plot of the book is basically a woman moves back to her hometown after her mother dies and she brings her daughter with her and she's recently divorced. And so she's trying to figure out this new life in the midst of grief, the new town, um, the divorce and all the technicalities of that. And I was very worried about where it was gonna go because the divorce was not on biblical grounds. And of course there's new relationships in there. So I was like, what's the storyline gonna go? Are they gonna resolve this unbiblical divorce? I don't know. And I can't really tell you without spoilers, but I will say I did really appreciate the ending and I thought it was a cool ending. So I think the best part of the book is just to see how the community comes around each other. And each of the old ladies, that's part of this little group that they do every month, I think. Um, they give some great advice and um, it was fun just to see the old lady shenanigans together. Um, there also was a sweet like salvation moment, I think, when she was sitting in church and she just like, God really changes her heart. I thought that was really cool. The worst part though about this book and the reason why I only gave it three stars is just the worldview on relationships that even Christians have. Like the whole going on your first date and expecting a kiss is just so weird to me. And then you've been on so many dates and you've kissed and you're very confused on what the status of the relationship is and whether you're serious or not. And that's just so backwards and so messed up. So that really bothers me, but I think that overall I did enjoy this book and I would read more by this author. As far as content, um, there is romance, which I already talked about, and then there's some death, there's some adultery mention, and then some flirting that happens and is talked about. Man, I gotta speed this up. Okay, so the next book was The Nightmare Virus. I ended up giving this four stars. Um, this is by Nadine Brandes, and actually I did a whole video review on that, so go look at the last video that I posted and you can see all my thoughts on that book, but I did enjoy it, and I do definitely recommend that you go read it. 
Then I listened to two books by Aaron Bartels. Honestly, don't remember much about them. They were not remarkable and I ended up giving both of them two stars. So this is not an author that I would recommend. The Lady with the Dark Hair. This one is about like an artist in Spain, but also there's like an, uh, a modern timeline that it's switching back and forth between. There was just like weird relationships. Um, <clears throat> some There was some neat art stuff, but there was a lot of kissing. And one thing that I did appreciate about this book was that her mother has uh, like schizophrenia and she's taking medications and the daughter feels like she's enslaved to taking care of her all the time. And then the mother basically says in the end, like, I can take care of myself. I actually like can act normal if I want to. And then she like ends up acting totally normal. So I thought that was cool. Just like the emphasis on it was her own decision, her own responsibility, and she actually did have a choice in it. So I like that. And then I listened to The Words Between Us. Also, um, this one was a contemporary one. It like flashback, I think like the 1990s or something to now. It was a book about books. So that was cool. And there was like a road trip that was kind of neat. But other than that, it kind of felt a little bit pointless. I feel like there was a good quote about forgiveness, but it did not stick with me and all the characters really made questionable choices and a lot of those questionable choices were not um repented on and presented like in a bad light they just kind of moved on i don't know there was potential to this book but i won't be trying anymore by this author then i read anne of green gables this book is actually a compilation of anne of green gables and anne of avonlea so i only read half of it but i would definitely be returning to it to read Anne of Avonlea because every time I pick up a book like this I'm just reminded of how good the classics are and just the way that they put you in the setting and I ended up reading it for a couple days like super consistently and like that was all I read and just really got into the world and I actually kept forgetting that it was a fake world because I was so into it it's kind of weird but it just written so well so i love anne i love the the language that's used in here of course gilbert i have to read anne of avonlea just to get more gilbert in there and i don't want to give spoilers even though you'd think most people would know what happened in the story there's certain people like my mother who has never even watched the movies um so i don't want to spoil but that scene with matthew near the end you know what i'm talking about that really hit me and just felt really relatable in a sense and it was just so well written and so emotional. So I like that a lot, but obviously five stars for Anne of Green Gables, definitely one of my favorites. So even though it took me so long to read that Spurgeon book, I actually picked up a Flavel book, Keeping the Heart this month and read it in um, less than a month. So that was a pretty uh, impressive feat if I do say so myself. And this one is on how to keep your love for God and keep your heart focused on God throughout the very many different circumstances in life so whether it's things are going really well and you're tempted to focus on your circumstances and what is going well or if things are going poorly or if you're really anxious or if people are persecuting you all the different circumstances that happen and how to just remember god and to fight against those sinful feelings and thoughts that might come um, i definitely will be referring back to this both for myself and for in counseling because there's a lot of good practical tips in here so i would definitely recommend reading this and as a puritan book the language actually was pretty readable um there's a couple words that you know you might have to look up and some sentences you might have to reread but a lot of good truth in here and then i listened to patty callahan henry's once upon a wardrobe this is a fictional book about C.S. Lewis's life, kind of, and why he wrote Narnia. I have some very conflicting feelings about it. I did end up giving it four stars, but it is one of my sister's favorite books, so I felt a little bit guilty for not loving it. <clears throat> but there were things that I really did like, and then there was things that I didn't really like. I think that, for me, historical fiction about a person is really hard for me to read. Like, if you're doing an event, it's a little bit easier because you can get the details perfectly right. Whereas with a person, you don't know that he really made like that facial expression or would he really have said that? So that's difficult for me. However, I do think that um, Patty Henry did a great job of differentiating between what was fact and what was fiction. Basically there was this little girl, or I guess she was in college, who was trying to get answers from Lewis about why he wrote the books for her little brother who was dying. And so she goes to Lewis's house, she'll ask him a question, and then it will like switch chapters and she'll be telling the story to her brother 
but as far as I know, like the story that she was telling was completely factual. And so you could tell like, this is a story about his life versus here's the fictional part that's happening. Presumably, those are all true facts, but I thought that was well done and it was clear like which part was fact and which part was fiction without it being super clunky. There was a couple things that bothered me um, just as far as the author goes. There was a part where Lewis was talking about God and he says he did this, whatever, and the girl says, or she, which is just like so modern, heretical, did not have to be inserted in there. And then, I don't know, I felt like the kiss in here was a bit much. And um, even though I do read books that have romance in them, I just didn't like the kissing scene for some reason. But the romance by the end of it did end up really sweet and was a little bit surprising to me and I enjoyed it. So I thought this was a sweet story. I really didn't like the narrator. So I think that was part of the problem. But if you're looking for some historical fiction on C.S. Lewis, definitely pick that up. And then I read Chasing the White Lion by James R. Hannibal. If you watched really any of my videos, you know that I really love Hannibal. Um, almost all of his books I've loved except for one, The Shadow Catcher. I didn't love that one, but I ended up giving this four stars, probably more of like four and a half, but somehow he just writes books that have all this like technical detail that if you really focus on the details, you might get bogged down or not understand what's happening. But even though there is those aspects, you just still love the story. It's so well done. I think just the camaraderie in here and the fast paced heist and the, the found family dynamics. I don't know, it just makes for such a great story. And some of the characters, this is the second book um, in the, what's the series called? Talia Inger series. Um, the first book is um, The Griffin Heist. Uh, and some of the characters are really fleshed out, I feel like, in this one. So that was cool. I really loved Finn and just seeing Talia learning how to trust people and trust God and Val, her facade breaking down, and then Eddie is just a hilarious nerd, and Tyler just being like this best like uncle, father figure. I really love the characters in here. The biggest complaint I would have with this book and with really all of Ham Hannibal's books is a lot of the blood and violence that he puts in there. Not necessarily super violent, but there's just a lot of deaths. Obviously, there's these heists and these special ops, but oh, with that comes a lot of death. So I don't know that there needs to be that much death in there. I understand that he actually did fight in the military in a lot of these situations, but I did appreciate that while the team was pretending to be criminals, they did use a lot of non-lethal rounds, which was cool because if you're watching like some kind of spy movie, like everyone would have died but they use non-lethal rounds so that they're not killing a bunch of people. So I like that, but there still were some deaths. And there actually was some great Christianity in here and some mentions of repentance, which is unusual to find in a fiction book. So I really appreciate that. About Hannibal, I think he does a great job of mixing Christianity in there without making it seem out of place or cliche. It seems very accurate to what would happen in real life. And then the last book um, that I'm gonna talk about is LMNOP by Mark Dunn. I already talked about this a little bit in my book haul video. This is a book that Mark Dunn wrote about the pangram, a quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Um, Nevin Nollip wrote that sentence. It, a pangram is a sentence that contains all of the letters of the alphabet only once, I think, or when did it? No, it's more than once, but all of the letters of the alphabet in one sentence. Um, yeah, and so he tried to find, you know, a short one where he can contain them all. And so there's an island called Nollip Island, and this is a fictional story that Dunn wrote about censorship, basically, and just very good vocabulary. It was really cool to read, and I love how it showed ha what happens when you let an authoritarian government take over and dictate even what you read, write, say even in private. And it reminded me a lot of like, I Must Betray You by Rudis Apetis um, and just the censorship that was going on in the Soviet Union. So I think he did a great job on that. I gave it four stars. There is some romance, but I don't think anything past a kiss, a mention of divorce, and there is some violence in regards to executions for breaking the law. So those are all the books that I read in the month of May. I had some really good ones and I really enjoyed all the reading that I did. I hope you guys enjoyed um, watching this and let me know down in the comments if you've read any of the bo these books and what your thoughts on them. And I hope that you will come back for my next video because I have hit a thousand subscribers and I'm going to do a thousand subscriber Q&A 
and a giveaway. So make sure you look out for the, that video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.